In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to vary the chemical injection rate using a Venturi. There are two options that most people use. The first option is to adjust the motive flow. The motive flow is the flow rate that goes through the Venturi and creates a pressure differential. The second option is to have the high motive flow rate creating a high vacuum and then simply adjust the chemical flow going into the Venturi. So here's our test setup today. Uh, we're gonna be able to monitor what the motive flow rate is by adjusting a valve, uh, a ball valve here and looking at this flow meter that's gonna tell us the motive flow. That motive flow is gonna go through our Venturi and this is where the pressure differential will occur and we're going to see how the motive flow rate affects the vacuum by monitoring then what the chemical flow rate is uh, using our flow meter here. We also have our chemical valve set up as well as a chemical flow meter that we're going to be sucking just water today out of our uh, tank. So we're going to be using this setup to demonstrate how the motive flow affects the chemical flow rate as well as how the chemical valve affects the chemical flow rate. Remember that these Venturis require a pressure differential and so today we're creating our pressure differential by using a booster pump. So we have a small percentage of the booster pump flow that's going through the Venturi. This is referred to as the motive flow. This creates the pressure differential that we need for the vacuum for the Venturi to work. All right, so we're gonna start with our first test. Our first test is gonna be adjusting the motive flow. Right now, the valve is completely open and we have a motive flow rate here of around 20 gallons per minute. Our flow rate that's being injected, our chemical flow rate is 97 gallons per hour. So we're gonna to try to target a new flow rate here of 75 gallons per hour by adjusting the motive flow rate. So we're gonna go ahead and move the valve and see if we can't get a chemical flow rate of 75 gallons per hour. So you can see the ball valve there is about 45 degree angle. Remember, 90 degrees is completely off. We now have a mode of flow of, of about 18 or 19 and you can see that our chemical flow rate is still 97 gallons per hour. So we'll go ahead and close the valve down a little bit more. Remember our target is to get to try to get to 75 gallons per hour injection rate. Closing the valve down a little bit. We now have a new mode of flow rate of about 15 gallons per minute. And you can see that our chemical flow rate has still not changed, still around 97 gallons per hour. So let's continue to adjust. You can see it hardly takes any movement of that valve to make movement of the mode of flow. The mode of flow rate is now about 11 or 12 gallons per minute. And we now have a chemical flow rate of around 80. So we are just over our target mark of 75. Let's see if we can't get it down to 75. Again, just need to adjust that mode of flow ever so slightly. Chemical flow rate is dropping, st continuing to drop. Our motor flow is about nine gallons per minute and our chemical flow injection rate has dropped to around 35 gallons per hour. Big difference. Now we can try to bring it back up to 75, which is our target. By making a very slight adjustment to that ball valve. Chemical flow is climbing back up. Our motive flow is at 11. 
And now our chemical flow has settled out at about 63 gallons per hour. So we can try to make another fine tune adjustment to this. Our mode of flow is, is bouncing out between 11 and 12 gallons per minute, and our chemical flow rate is 73 gallons per hour, which is very close to the 75 we were targeting. So you can see it took us a few attempts here to get it to 75. If we were to try to go even lower to a very low flow, let's say five gallons per hour, you will notice that uh, it becomes extremely difficult to hold a very, uh, see it dropped to zero there. And, and the mode of flow rate is still six gallons per minute. So you have to have enough flow through that Venturi to keep vacuum to suck it, uh, the chemical in. So, you know, this is uh, difficult to do. Here's a graph showing the mode of flow compared to the chemical flow. The mode of flow is on the horizontal axis and the chemical flow is on the vertical axis. You can see our first point there with a mode of flow of 20 gallons per minute equaled 97 gallons per hour. And as we reduce the mode of flow, the chemical flow rate did not change. But then we hit basically a point where we started to adjust the mode of flow and the chemical flow was really reacting. And this is what makes it difficult to uh, adjust the chemical flow with the mode of flow rate. All right, so now we're going to test the chemical adjustment using the valve on the injection line. You'll notice that we have our mode of flow valve completely open, and we have a mode of flow of about 20 gallons per minute again. That valve is not going to change during this test. You can see that we're injecting fertilizer here, actually just water, at about 97 gallons per hour again, so we're back to normal our standard flow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to adjust the chemical flow using a gate valve and we're going to try to get it to around 75 gallons per hour using the gate valve. So the gate valve is wide open so it's going to take a little bit of adjustment here to get it to start uh, changing the chemical flow. Once it starts changing the chemical flow as you can see it's doing now uh, we should be able to dial this in to 75 gallons per hour. Right now we're at 95. All right, so we turn this valve a little bit more. You can see there's 75.4, 75. Basically right there, we were able to dial it in right to 75. That was a little bit of luck there, but uh, but we can adjust this to whatever we want here. So let's go ahead and try to get it down to about 50. You'll notice that we don't have to move the chemical valve as much anymore because uh, we are now in the adjustment range here. You can now see that the chemical flow is now around 60 and dropping. Still in continuing to drop. We're so it went out at about 57, so we have to make one minor adjustment to the valve there. Still at 57. Making another small adjustment. You can see the chemical value starting to drop again. 55. Another small adjustment. 54, 53, 52. One more small adjustment and we should have it there at about 50 gallons per hour injection rate. There you go, 50.5. Pretty much right on what we were shooting for, and if we were to make another tiny, tiny adjustment, we could probably get it there. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to see if we can get this down to 25 gallons per hour injection rate. So we'll make another adjustment on the valve. 
Dropping down, 26, 28, bouncing around a little bit as it dials in, 25.6, 26. Pretty much right there at 25 gallons per hour injection rate. And now you'll notice when we tried to drop to five gallons per hour with the motor flow, we were not able to do that. And so now we're gonna be able to dial this down into around less than 10 anyways, gallons per hour. 14, 13. Six, five, 4.9, 4.7, 4.5. So we overshot just a little bit, but we can make a cr small correction back. We're at 3.1, less than three. We need to make another small correction back up. You can see again, we're not moving it all that much. See the flow starts to increase there again. Settling out at about 2.8. All right, so we could we could mess with this valve and we could get it to five. The point here is, is that we weren't even able to get anywhere near this with the motor flow. Once you lose vacuum because you don't have enough motor flow, you now no longer have any suction, so you can't get the chemical uh, flow rate that you want, especially if you want it to be a very small uh, rate here. So a couple things also is you got to make sure that you have the Venturi for the flow that you want to be injecting. If you have uh, the right size Venturi, I should say, if you're using a very large Venturi, you should be inject injecting large volumes of uh, fertilizer. If you're using a smaller Venturi, you can inject smaller flows. So it's hard to get that low chemical injection rate here when you have a very large Venturi like we have. But with the chemical valve, we can do that with the motor flow, we can't do that. But it's probably better to have the smaller uh, Maisie injector if you're trying to do these small flow rate injections. So what I want to demonstrate now is that uh, you have to have the right valve on the chemical line. Now that we know it's probably best to adjust the chemical valve to get the flows that you want, because the motor valve is just a little too difficult, you also have to have the right valve there. So you can see we're back at our 97 gallons per hour. We still have our motor flow rate at 20 gallons a minute, and we're gonna adjust that chemical valve. So what you're seeing here is a demonstration of us adjusting the ball valve uh, to achieve different chemical flow rates. Uh, the bottom line on this is that you need to have uh, the right sized equipment. You need to have the right size Venturi for the volume of uh, chemical that you're trying to inject, and you also need to have the right size valve. If you don't have the properly sized equipment, then uh, you're not going to be able to um, get accurate injection rates. Hopefully this video demonstrates that adjusting the chemical flow valve is better than adjusting the motive flow. Check out our other videos in the fertigation series. Thanks for watching.